it can be a real challenge as an artist to navigate working with other people. Whether it's friendships, with dating, with family members, with other creative people that we're trying to work with, a lot of these relationships can end up in disappointment. The process of getting disappointed so often by other people can leave us discouraged from wanting to work with others. And before you know it, you're just a lonely artist in the world wishing that someone would understand them. But it doesn't have to be this way. There is a way to be able to maintain relationships with other people. Yo, yo, it's your friendly neighborhood knucklehead. And in this video, I want to talk about trusting other people, accepting them for who they are, and being able to maintain a relationship. Now, I'm as DIY as it gets, but it's undeniable that working with other people and being able to incorporate other perspectives into your life and into your art will always make it better. Even if someone's just constantly giving you bad advice, at least it gives you something to think about to what not to do. Any kind of feedback is going to be something that you can use to make yourself better. In any relationship, whether it's co-workers, friends, families, a romantic relationship with a partnership, a business partner, any kind of relationship with another person comes down to the one core value, which is being on the same page. I've been getting more and more bands coming on my podcast lately, and it's one of the coolest things to see when there's multiple people in a creative project and they all share the same energy. Energy imbalance is probably the biggest thing that brings down uh, couples or bands or any kind of working relationship. That energy imbalance will showcase itself in communication, in actions, and just in attitude to be around another person. And this is gonna bring me to the main point of what I've experienced talking with other creatives on my podcast, other creatives that I've worked with, with music or anything like that, and especially in my romantic relationships. There are two kinds of people. There are doers and there are talkers. And now how you can tell which one a person is, once you start to get familiar with them, Figure out how they surprise you. Doers will surprise you with the way that they talk, whereas talkers will surprise you with things that they do. I'll give you an example. If you know someone to be a doer and then they speak on something that they don't do, that's going to be a surprising thing. Doers are so inclined to doing stuff that their ability to communicate kind of falls off. Whereas talkers are so fixated on communicating that when it comes time to take action, they're nowhere to be found. Now, after being disappointed by some people in my own life and witnessing successes from other people, what I'll say is the main thing is figuring out how we can accept someone for who they are and meet them where they are. We have to detach from our expectations. Some of the time it's on us from expecting too much of a person. We expect a plumber to also be our mechanic. When we expect too much from another person, we end up being disappointed. Over time, we're going to have to learn the process of making it work. And that applies to all relationships, friends, family members, and romantic relationships. How can we make it work? That's not to say that there aren't deal breakers. There are total deal breakers in relationships. I'm reminded of reading Kurt Cobain's journals where if you wanted to be a Nirvana in the early days, I think they practiced like five times a week and there were some drummers that would come in and play, but they were only able to play like three nights a week and Kurt would say, you can't be in the band. But through 
through those processes of having people come into our lives and then exit our lives, we're able to figure out the kind of circle that we want to create. And that's the most important thing. Who's in our tribe? Who are in your favorites with your phone contacts or something like that? Who can you reach out to for certain things? It comes over time, the trust can build with other people. But here's the thing, you have to allow it to build. And this is something that I'm trying so hard to embody these days, letting it happen. There are millions of distractions in the world today. And what we have to do is when we focus on ourselves and we allow ourselves to even get lonely, we accept where we are, we can then accept other people for where they are. Again, this is something that's super challenging, but accepting our own loneliness is a big thing, especially with romance. If we can accept ourselves as being lonely and accepting the way that we can fulfill our own loneliness, we won't depend on someone else to take our loneliness away. And that's probably one of the biggest things that leads to codependent relationships that don't work out is expecting that other person to take away our loneliness whenever we feel like it. And then when they're not able to do that, we feel like they are not there for me. But the reality is we are not there for ourselves. So the path to maintaining working and romantic relationships is first accepting where we are and being able to fulfill our own needs. And then when we look to build a relationship with another person, we have to accept them for who they are and where they are and try not to put too much expectation on them to be something that they aren't. We gotta let it happen. And if you're at this part of the video, you might as well give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And over here, I'm gonna put the rest of the playlist that is artistic advice and awareness. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and stay creative.